as far as our religious maturity is concerned, every one of us should see ourselves next year, you know, from this Ramadan to next Ramadan, or you know what, Ramadan's already over. So this December to next December, this winter to next winter, how am I gonna be a better Muslim? And I, I'd like to highlight three areas. So if those of you that are writing this down, just three areas where you wanna be able to say to yourself in a tangible way, I'm, a, I'm better off. I've made some progress in three areas at least. The first of those areas is worship. The first concern is worship. Has my fajr improved? Am I making Isha and Fajr at least on time perfectly? The guys, am I waking up for Fajr and making it to the masjid? Make it a goal. Maybe you're not doing it every day, but set a goal that you're gonna accomplish that this year. More and more and more, you're gonna be able to get, and I'm gonna go to sleep earlier. Oh my God, youth, you can't accomplish anything in life if you don't go to sleep early. I'm telling you, you know those deep conversations you have over hookah at night? Yeah, that's not reviving the ummah, let me just tell you now. That was deep bros, good, good talk, good talk. Then you wake up at 10 a.m. to pray Fajr. You know, that's, the Ummah sure gonna revive through that. There was some deep discussions last night over some shawarma and some hookah, you know? Go to sleep on time. Go to sleep on time, wake up early. Set, get your Fajr right. Get your Quran in the morning. Inna Quran al-Fajri kana mashhudan. Get your Quran in order. We talk about changing the world, we, ha we can't even change our day yet. We can't even change our day yet. When you change your day, then you can change your year. That means you can change your life. But you start with your day. There's a daily goal. My mornings have to become more productive in terms of worship. In terms of worship. Part of worship I would include, especially those of you that are people of vision, your vision will come, your inspiration will come with the Qur'an. And the Qur'an has to be in your heart. You have to have a project of memorizing as much Qur'an as you can. As little at a time as possible. If you can handle more, take on more. But every day, Fajr and a little bit of memorization, a little bit of recitation, and that's what starts your day. And I can guarantee you, if you do that in your life, even if you do that this week once, if you do it once, you will notice the difference the rest of the day. You will notice that day has more barakah in it, you're getting more accomplished. The doors around you are opening, opportunities are coming, your mind is clearer, creative ideas are coming to you. It's, you'll see it's, Allah brings those blessings to you, those, opens those doors that are otherwise closed. So the first of how many areas did I say? I said three areas and the first of those areas is worship. That's the first area I'm going to improve in. The second area that you really have to work on, that you really, really have to be concerned with, is knowledge, is knowledge. And how am I going to grow in my knowledge this year? And by the way, I separate knowledge from worship. I separate the two. Because some people focus so much on knowledge and their worship is terrible. They don't worship, they think their knowledge is compensating them for it. So they're studying lots of tafsir and they know a lot of tajweed, but they don't even pay attention in salat. I mean, what are you doing? What's that knowledge for? Your first, I'm, I'm mentioning these things in priority. First thing was worship. The second thing is knowledge. And I don't mean become a alim and get a degree in sharia. Those of you that want to do that, congratulations. I'm talking to everybody here. Not everybody here is going to be a mufti or a alim or whatever. But you have to be educated Muslims. You have to be, at, at, there needs to be some minimal level of education in your Islam. And my recommendation for you for that is that by the end of the year, the coming year, you've studied at least a couple of things. You've studied the seerah, the life of the Prophet ﷺ, once. And you should do it every year once. And actually you should read a different source on the seerah every year for the next few years. And really study it. So if you take one book of, don't ask me which book you should read on the seerah, read all of them. But take one at a time. Take one and go through it one year. Then go again to the seerah again. Again another year. Then again another year. And you, you know what? Because that is the life of that man sallallahu alayhi wa is our vision, is our inspiration. So you have to keep going back to it. That's a part of your education. And it'll give you perspective and it will open doors for, for reflection and contemplation for you, that study of seerah in and of itself. There are wonderful resources on that available and there, I, I don't think you'll have any trouble finding them, inshallah ta'ala. At the same time, you have to make substantial gains. In that same year, you have to make substantial gains in your Qur'an. 
I'm still in the area of knowledge. First area was worship, second area is knowledge, right? In this knowledge, you have to make some substantial gains in your Quran, which let's just say you decided this year you're gonna try to memorize, I don't know, Surah Al-Kahf, let's just say. So you set a goal. For this, this year, I'm gonna memorize Surah Al-Kahf. That means I'm gonna memorize it, I'm gonna study its tafsir, I'm gonna read it in translation, I'm gonna try to understand every word in its vocabulary. If there's a lecture series on Surah Al-Kahf, if there's a tafsir available on Surah Al-Kahf, if there's an article and paper on Surah Al-Kahf, I'm going to take it and I'm gonna consume it. This is Surah Al-Kahf year for me. Next year might be Surah Al-Rahman year. The year after that might be Surah Al-Baqarah year, I don't know. Maybe it's a couple of surahs a year. But every year you make a substantial gain in your Qur'an. Tangible. And don't just say, I'm going to study the Qur'an. Don't do that. And don't just pick random passages. Take a surah, take a couple of surahs and focus. My biggest criticism of Muslim youth today is we don't have focus. Focus on one thing. Get it right. At least you can look back and say, Alhamdulillah, this year I accomplished one more surah, two more surahs, three more surahs, something. And when you study a surah, you don't just learn its meanings. As a student came up and asked me, what's more important, you think? Understanding the Qur'an or memorizing it? And I said, how do you think that those two things are separate? Why do you think that? You know why we memorize the Qur'an? So we can repeat it over and over again. And when we repeat the ayat over and over again, Allah gives us more room to think and reflect more and more. And you start seeing things when you recite something ten times that you didn't see when you recited it nine times. He opens more doors. It, wallahi, this is true of the Qur'an. The more you recite it, the more you understand it. And the less you recite it, the less you understand it. It's not like any other book. And memorizing it is a fundamental piece of understanding it. It is a fundamental of understanding it. So the surah you're going to study and understand better be the surah you're memorizing. Those two things go hand in hand. So I talked about seerah and I talked about Qur'an. Now I'll add one light elective. This is your Islamic semester for the year, for yourself, right? I'll add an elective to this, this semester. And the, the elective is at least three or four du'as. Four du'as, you, you studied them, you memorized them, and they became a part of your day. This is actually combining knowledge and, oh, I got 10, ten minutes is like an eternity. I don't need 10 minutes, but that's okay. You know, memorizing a few du'as from the Prophet Sallallahu that you can make a part of your day. Now you're combining knowledge with practice. You're combining both of those things, okay? And actually each of these three areas of knowledge that I mentioned, and I didn't mention others, I know there's fiqh, I know there's aqidah, I know there's tafsir, I know there's other areas of knowledge. I, I mentioned these three things on purpose, because these three things will make you a better Muslim immediately. Immediately they start having a practical impact on you. Your salah starts improving, because you're reciting Quran that you've understood. You know? Your love of the Prophet ﷺ is increasing because you're learning about his life every year. So every time you send salawat upon him, it's, it's deeper. That salawat, those salawat are deeper felt. Your knowledge of dua is bringing you closer to Allah because now you know what you're asking him. You know what you're actually asking him. Now, this is knowledge. So the first thing was worship and the second thing was? Knowledge, and I hope you see how I tried to fuse those two things too. Even though I kept them separate, one is helping the other. So if your knowledge is not helping your worship, I don't know if it's real knowledge. I, I don't know if that's real knowledge, it, 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 in terms of deen. In terms of deen. Then there's the third area, and that is service. There's service. And that's where you have to figure out, you have to set some time, whether it's once a week, whether it's on the weekends, you don't need the screen anyway. If it was on the weekends, whether it's, you know, um, once in a month, but you have to do some kind of service, meaning, meaning help people. Help people. And that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do this under an Islamic banner. If you want to volunteer at Habitat for Humanity, do it. It's okay, it'll be cool to see a bearded guy helping out with that too. It'll be cool. We don't have to do things under our own banner. Good causes are good causes. Whether Christians are doing them, Jews are doing them, you know, you know, the Gates Foundation is doing them, it doesn't matter. If it's a good cause, you can be a part of it. And actually, personally, I recommend Muslims to be part of good causes that are run by non-Muslims so they get to see that Muslims care too. And it gives them an opportunity to ask Muslims questions about Islam. 
It gives them that opportunity. So volunteer, help out, be part of something, something you feel passionately about. And just do that for yourself. Don't publicize it, don't tweet about it. Just helped out, volunteered today. Feel really good, alhamdulillah. Humble brag. Like, don't, don't do that. Just do it for yourself. It will make you a better human being. You'll, be, you'll become a better person when you do these kinds of... And parents, those of you that have parents that, are, that have teenage children, if you can encourage that sort of activity and even be, take part in it with your teenage kids, it's actually most important in teenage years to engage in the activity of helping other people. That's part of what builds maturity. Because the teenage years are when our youth, our youth in general, not just Muslim youth, youth in general are the most self-absorbed. They're really just, their world is themselves and how they look and their friends and their Facebook status or how many friends they have or whatever. That stuff becomes really important to them at that age. They become very petty. And if you can pull them out of that mindset at that age and make them care about things beyond themselves, helping other people, seeing what suffering looks like and helping with that, you know, like recently, for example, with the disaster of the, you know, the storm that hit and all those people in New Jersey and New York and all of this is not too far from you guys. If you did a, a weekend trip every weekend with some, with the Red Cross or anybody else and you went and just helped out people whose homes are destroyed or there's a tree in their driveway or something and just went and helped and came back. If you just did that, it, it would, I'm telling you, it will bring you closer to Allah like nothing else. You do these three things and you're, you've at least met the foundational goals to do great things in life. This is not your goal. These are the, these are the things you've met so you can actually achieve goals.